Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Mesa, Arizona. Although I'm not there, I'm in Wisconsin. I'm out of sorts, but we're going to make this work. We're going to make it happen. And because I'm on vacation, I want you to know that Floor Academy, when you listen regularly, when you implement the things that you hear in your business, we can help you take vacations too. You get to go and enjoy all the fun things, water parks with your kids, the zoo, movies, uh, you know, getting across the country with gas prices that are through the roof so that you can you can you can afford to make that happen with your gas guzzling truck all the good things because you're running a profitable business that's not owning a job and living paycheck to paycheck and nobody wants that so listen to the show and you too can can do this and and have fun and enjoy yourself and you know today's topic is absolutely amazing okay we are going to talk with timothy studeman and we're, we're talking about if money wasn't an issue, then what would you do? So it, it's a great story that Tim has for us of how he arrived at becoming a, a tile contractor. And I can't wait to see what he does with his business over the next few years. All that being said, Timothy, who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? My name is Timothy Studeman. I'm owner and lead installer of Built on Integrity. We're a residential remodel and tile contracting company. We're now based out of Northeast Texas. Uh, just recently from, we started in Southern Oklahoma. Uh, I'm a NTCA state ambassador, uh, certified tile installer number 1753. Uh, and I'm a member of the Texas Tile Policy at admin over there with our leader joe fowler you got a lot going on how do you keep it all going <laughs> well, my wife tells me when i miss stuff okay now if i could just get her to tell me before i'd be doing good and, well and and you're very it's very kind of her to be able to um <laughs> assist you with all of that because she's pregnant with with another child from you and um You've already got her taking up a lot of time raising raising them kids, so you're fortunate she helps you with your business. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, she is a she is a strong strong woman. So, uh, tell me about growing your business in Oklahoma and kind of where this this move came from to Texas, and then what it's been like to start over. Well, when I decided to start. Uh, I was just uh, uh, chucking a truck, like I like to say, doing anything anybody would write a check for. Uh, started doing a lot of outside work and quickly figured out I hated that. <laughs> and so I kind of niched down to interior only. Uh, and then I realized, like, I could just do that. I could just keep narrowing down my focus and telling people, no, I don't do that anymore. Uh, and ended up getting all the way down to just bathroom and tile. Uh, um, whenever we decided to move, uh, I shut down, finish up our projects there, and decided to just open up strictly as focused on tile, but bathroom remodels also, mm -hmm. uh, instead of trying to make the transition still running. Okay. And what's it been like trying to start over from the ground up again? You know, you got to get your name out there. You got to get people to trust you. All, all that fun stuff. Yeah. We moved about six months ago, but I still have about two months worth of project in Oklahoma. And so I'm just now starting to try to find work in Texas. Mm -hmm. And so haven't, I guess I haven't really even got started yet. So. <laughs> Okay. Work it work in progress. But I yeah. that's that's part of the journey, right? This is this is what makes what if money wasn't an issue. But and look, I I get like we're we're saying this is not saying what if money wasn't an issue like I'm a I'm a millionaire. And so let's let's talk about that, okay? Where were you at a, a decade ago, right? Like what were you doing like a decade ago? Uh, well, 
specifically a decade ago, I was an EMT just just starting college because I had decided I wanted to go to medical school. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd been a EMT for, see, I started in 08, started college in 2010, worked full-time as an EMT in college, uh, and uh, yeah, I had, in high school, I decided not to go to college when I graduated because I didn't know what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't see spending $30,000 on a degree that I might not use. And so I decided not to go to college. I ended up working as EMT, loved it. And I was like, I'll go. I'll do this. I'll make medicine my career. Okay. Uh, and started college, started taking pre-med courses, uh, working full-time as an EMT. Uh, and within three years, I completed all the requirements to get into med school, even without a bachelor's degree. Uh, and so I went ahead and applied and walked in the door. Like I still have no idea <laughs> how, but, <laughs> okay. uh, uh, and so got in there and hated it. Just was completely miserable. I, uh, within two months, I knew I'd made a mistake. But I was already uh, almost a hundred thousand in student loan debt at that point. Oh my goodness! And and they actually have a saying: once you're in that deep, your only choice is to keep playing the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and so I kind of had thoughts like, I guess I'll just do this until I pay off my career, and then maybe treat people to trade for chickens, kind of thing. But I didn't want to do it for a living. Mm-hmm. But after my heart wasn't in it anymore, it just didn't work out. I, I struggled. I made it into rotations, was do it in their hands on doing surgery on people, treating people and love that part of it. But, uh, it's so business focused and it just, they, they can't see the forest through the trees. They'll, They'll lose sight of healing somebody just to make sure they chart it right so they can bill appropriately. Uh, and it just didn't sit with me. I couldn't, mm-hmm. couldn't do it. I And so in 2017, I ended up leaving. Uh, at that time, I was had got 450000 in student loan debt. Oh, my goodness, uh, dude. Washed out, had no idea what I was doing, stumbled around for six months just delivering pizza working at chick-fil-a just anything Mm -hmm. uh and i was just staring at this mountain of debt uh and uh i was getting job offers to go be a medical sales rep uh and they were offering to pay more than doctors make when they make when they first come out because i had this training Mm -hmm. i could talk with the docs but that was the whole business side of it that I hated (laughs) and I just about uh, like I I just about did it because it was the only way I could pay for it but I couldn't I just walked away said it's not worth it Mm -hmm. and uh and so I'm trying to figure out how to pay for all that I'm thinking there's no way I can there's nothing I can ever do that's going to make me enough to pay it uh, off. I just that, got... That's a lot of debt. That's an overwhelming pile of debt. I, I felt mm-hmm. swallowed by... I was in for like 70, and my wife was in for 30, and then I, you know, it kind of balloons a little bit. Um, but mm-hmm. like even at 100, 120, it, it feels... Un- like you just can't even fathom it and so 450 and that's not all of it right because jessica was going to school too yeah that's just my student loans we had our mortgage on our house we had about twenty thousand in credit card debt uh and i think she ended up at eighty five thousand or so on her student loan debt so well over half uh, a million i you know yeah it's not well over but you know we were it's a good chunk yeah Right, right now, my 
total debt sitting at about three quarters of a million. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I, look, uh, and thank you for being honest and willing to talk yeah. about this on like in to a, yeah. a national audience, dude. That's that's really yeah. not a lot of people would would say something like that and and open <laughs> and be you know admit to it and want to talk about it. So what? Look, uh, you you stopped going to school. You're delivering pizzas. You have a wife that's still with you. Okay, like she's okay with the decisions being made. What did that communication mm-hmm. look like between the two of you to even say like I can't do this? I'm not happy. She had been trying to get me to leave long before I did. She's a lot more in touch with my feelings than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so a lot of times she just has to look at me and tell me you're having a bad day. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I need to go blow off some steam. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, she's very, she's always had my back mm-hmm. and really has. And so I, I couldn't have done it without her. I couldn't have made the tough choices that I still think were the right choices, but mm-hmm. uh, like I, I would have just suffered in silence and, and been miserable my entire life. Uh, so with, without her, would you be a doctor right now following, you know, writing up these like, oh, well, I'm just going to have to chart this and do this. And I'm sorry I'm not healing you, but, you know, this this drug company is paying me to write this prescription. So, like, here you go. This will mask it. I probably wouldn't have went to college without her okay. because she motivated me and supported me and kept kept me going like I we I think we got married like six months before I started college and uh, like I I was pretty down on myself didn't feel like I could achieve much because of my family's background kind Mm -hmm. of thing from where I came from and so I didn't have initiative to try because I had seen where everybody in my family ended up. So why, why put in the effort kind of thing and mm-hmm. just her telling me that I'm not them and that uh, some I've said uh, on the floor Academy post, just cause it didn't work for them. Don't mean it won't work for you. Exactly. Like, don't, don't rob my chance from your failure. That's that. That's big advice right there. That's that. That's that head trash I'm talking about. We can all get in with with mentalities, right? Like you see it happen over and over to other people, and you you constantly say, "Oh, that doesn't work in my area." Well, did you personally try it? No. Okay, then shut up. Like you go do it. So I, I like that. That's great advice. To you know, don't don't let your missed opportunities or actual results affect where I'm trying to go because I'm not you and I may have different results, you know? So that's, that's awesome. Um, how did we get to let's, let's, we, we dropped out. She said, look, this isn't working. And, and she's okay with that. She's okay with this pile of, of debt that you've all accumulated. (laughs) And I, I mean, you're like, you're stumbling around delivering pizzas and stuff. So where does it go from there? Like what, it, when, how do we build into becoming the tile guy? Because I know there was some steps to getting to even there. You had some other careers while you were at it. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I used to collect hobbies is what I always told people. I've been involved in, and in a lot of different industries, but not anything to this extent. Like, mm-hmm. I would get involved in the industry enough to realize it wasn't the place for me uh, and move on. Um, but so I started working at a Chick-fil-A. They built a Chick-fil-A in our town. I was the first person to interview, the first person hired. Uh, and it was great. I loved it but I wasn't good at it. <laughs> I could not manage fast food workers. Uh, the, um, and the operator came to me one day and told me like, this isn't the place for you. Like 
not because of us, but because of you. You need to be somewhere else where you can excel because I can see your, I, I can't remember the words he used, but just, I wasn't reaching my potential there. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me, how long do you think it would take you to figure out what you want to do? <laughs> I told him, I've got no idea. This was my plan. <laughs> uh, and he paid me a month to go figure it out. Wow. Uh, and um, I love him to death. He uh, Actually, he just opened up a new store up in Arkansas. My entire family drove up there for the grand opening just to surprise him and support him. But in that time, I was trying to figure out, I was crushed by another failure of, I can't even work at Chick-fil-A successfully and really mm -hmm. felt down mm -hmm. on myself. Uh, but started digging into it and started thinking, there's nothing I can do to pay off this debt. I'm not, like I can't make enough money. Like, well then, money doesn't matter anymore then. Mm. If, if it don't matter how much I make, then it doesn't matter how much I make. So what would I be doing if I didn't need to make money? Uh, and realized that I was happiest when I was making things with my hands, when I was building something. I had went to a technology center in high school and had enrolled in the construction program. And within the first week, realized I already knew everything they was going to teach. <laughs> like I had, I had done some roofing with my grandpa. I had done some siding. I had done some framing. Mm -hmm. I needed to learn like carpet and drywall, electric plumbing. And they was like, oh no, we'll, we don't teach those. We just teach being a GC basically. Uh, we, the class actually builds a house and they hire all that stuff out. <laughs> and Jeez. so. I ended up leaving that program, uh, but realized that that's what I wanted to do. And so I just all of a sudden started a <laughs> contracting business. Uh, I had kind of some pretty basic Ryobi power tools and went at it, started knocking on doors, got in real heavy with doing rental property maintenance and repairs. Okay. Uh, and just kept doing, but then they kept making me do things that just weren't the right fix, just weren't weren't good. And I it ate at me. I couldn't mm. couldn't stand it. Uh, and so I, after about six months, I quit doing rental property stuff. But my I live in a college town, uh, and so I believe sixty percent of the houses in our town are rental properties uh, like way over the national average. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I couldn't, I couldn't hardly get away from it. It all the work was rental properties, but that was the first straw when I decided like, it's not worth the money. I'm not doing this anymore uh, and cut them off. And then I was like, I'm done doing roofing. <laughs> Like it just too hot. Don't like it. Cut that out. And then cut out all outside work. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so I got down to just doing the interior work, and I would do everything I could get away with. Like I had no problem doing my own electric, my own plumbing. I could pass plumbing inspection better than any of the plumbers I had hired. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't touch tile work. Like. For some reason, looking at it, it looked too complicated to me. Like, it looked like I don't do it every day. I don't do it enough to know the ins and outs, the little tricks. And so I always hired out tile work. And I fired everybody I ever hired for tile work. <laughs> I, okay. I, I, hold on. I want to I wanna take this back a little bit because there's, there's this theme. Sure. Okay. So you decided... My debt is so big 
I can't even climb this mountain. So I just want to go work with my hands. I want to like I want to do something I love and be happy, which I look, I totally commend you for because it's so much easier to go and do something you enjoy. But then you start working and you're able to work with your hands, but people are making you do essentially crappy work because they don't want to pay for it to be done right. And you say, "Mm, nah, I'm good. I'd rather not work than do it the way you want me to do it. So Mm -hmm. obviously that's where the the name came from, built on integrity. And I I appreciate that. But it's, once again, it's not money for you. It doesn't matter. Like you're you're over this, which in a the American culture today is a very different attitude. Like you you are after other things to make yourself happy and, and fulfilled. So I look, that's absolutely amazing, phenomenal. I commend you. I can't believe that you know that there's, I apologize for the dogs, folks. I don't know what's going on. I can't get up and do it. I'm the only one here. Um, so it's it's so different and refreshing to see someone that's just like, look, I just want to. I want to be happy. I want to be happy with my family. Um, where did this? Where did it develop from? How do you come to that? Like decision right once again like with your wife you're just like yeah you know what forget it like we don't need a lot and that's fine we're as long as we have each other and and the kids like we're gonna be happy fine and everything will be all right like where did that come from what was that discussion how do you how do you say like we're just gonna forget about three quarters of a million dollars in debt and not care well um a lot of it comes from, I guess, my Christian faith. It just is very ingrained into my beliefs and my personality development, if you call it that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I don't get my value from other things, from from people or uh, what I can do. That That was the breaking point when I realized that like my value didn't come from what I could produce. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, and my wife's on board with that. And we just, we grew up poor where we learned how to be happy being poor. <laughs> and so mm. uh, we I would, would rather I wouldn't call you poor, poor happy than, than be unhappy. Mm-hmm. And get away with those, get away from those struggles, but I don't. I don't it, think you're poor. I, I you're money poor, right? Like yeah. if we want to call it that. Yeah. But you, I've met the two of you. I, I haven't met your kids, but they they seem happy and 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 good. But your wife was at coverings with you and and happy to be there and walking around, you know, a couple months pregnant and, and, and dealing with it with a smile on her face, let alone she's at, you know, she doesn't do tile. What the heck does she care about the newest large format thing coming out or the fact that you got to work the NTCA booth for a couple hours or like she was there with a smile on her face, just happy to see you being happy. Like it's, it's, it's amazing, dude. I love it. She's uh, heard me complain so much. She's starting to see issues with tile. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we, we talk about, we'll, as contractors, we'll be mm-hmm. out somewhere, notice bad tile work or anything. And she called me mad the other day because she uh, almost took a picture of uh, a tile that was cracking along a saw cut joint <laughs> that she recognized. And she almost took a picture to send to me. But she decided not to out of spite because she <laughs> she's not going down to that level. <laughs> I, you know, on the, on the way up to Wisconsin, we, we stayed at a hotel and I, I walked in and my wife had realized in the pictures when she was looking at it, that it had LVP floors and I walk in and I'm not even in like past the threshold yet. Like I took one step in the room and I'm looking down at the floor and I was like, huh, all the butt joints have, have 
spaces between them. I was like, probably not acclimated, right? <laughs> can't we can't help but but look and even my wife is like looking at stuff and she'll walk in walmart but oh that that space is that's that's not space properly that end joint there like that's wrong so yeah when i was an off. emt i would stand in line at the grocery store looking at people's veins so <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he'd be easy to get an iv in <laughs> yeah. I, it's just you know it's a it's a occupational hazard i think it, it just it, mm-hmm. it happens like you pay attention to what you're into right if you really wanted a red car you would start noticing every red car um on the freeway as you drive around so it all adds up but i i think this this attitude you have is really amazing and the support you have and so you've you've taken that and you were like I don't care what I have to do. Like, I just want to go build things. And so now you, you have this company, you've, you've taken a stand to not take the work being offered to you. Where does it, where are we going? What, what are we building right now? Well, a uh, plot twist. I've realized in the last year, the more I'm getting into the towel side of it, I can make enough doing this to pay off that debt. Say it again. I can, <laughs> I can make enough. Uh, I can. I'm making more now than my classmates at medical school that did graduate this year. I am, uh, and so, um, learning how to to cope with the loss of this grief I've been carrying around for so long of this is something that I can't Mm -hmm. come out of. I can't overcome. And now that I realize I can, now it's time to build a plan. Uh, That's amazing. But look, I think it's, you searched out something that you truly wanted to enjoy and now you can be successful at it. Look, you don't have to be a broke contractor. Those two words. I didn't know that until somebody told me. Those two words do not belong together. Broke, contractor. You have skills that are in need. There's not enough of us as it is. Your time, your vision, your skills, they're all worth something. You don't have to be broke. And this isn't like, okay, I'll get on a soapbox real quick and I'll get off of it. We'll get back to Timothy's story. Look, the message of charge more is a good message. You can't just charge more. You have to have value offers with it to justify the price. You can up your prices 10, 20% from where you're at. You'll probably won't get a lot of resistance. You start pushing past that, you're going to have to start offering things that others don't offer. Show up on time. Send out a proposal when you say you're going to send it out. Don't tell somebody two days. Tell them you'll have it Wednesday Wednesday by 1 p.m., right? Give them a specific date. Get it there at that time. Set yourself apart with things that add value that people are looking for that no other contractors are doing. You don't have to be broke in this industry. You, you're you choosing to live paycheck to paycheck, in my opinion. You can go sell for more if you want to take the risk to do it. If you don't want to take the risk, I still think you don't have to be broke. There's lots of stores. They're all offering to hire people. If you don't like the one you're at, go to another one. You can do this. I believe in you. Timothy believes in you because he's doing it. So when I first started increasing my prices, it was, I was charging so little because I felt like I was ripping them off. If I, if I can do it for less, I should charge it for less, Mm -hmm. but there would be an issue. There would be a hiccup and it come down to, I don't have enough money to feed my family or I've got to cut a corner and well, I can find another way to feed my family. (laughs) Uh, So I would always still do it right. Even taking a loss uh, and I took some hard losses and that was my motivation to increase my prices. Mm. And so I had to increase my value so that I could increase my prices. Uh, but just increasing it enough to give me the freedom to be able to do it right was the initial drive. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to interrupt this real quick, and then we're going to get back into this. Hey, listeners, whether you're an installer, retailer, distributor, or serve in another capacity within our industry, attending trade shows is a solid resource to expand your knowledge and networking base. You can also learn about the newest and industry-leading products coming to market. The International Surface Event is returning to Las Vegas January 31st through February 2nd, 2023, so mark your calendars now. Floor Academy podcast listeners will have exclusive registration offers coming soon. Stay up to date with the International Surfaces event page on Facebook. Johns Manville manufactures a range of innovative building materials, including products for the flooring industry from GoBoard to Evolith. Johns Manville products are not often visible, but they provide technical, environmental, and economic advantages to the essential items you are installing every day. GoBoard is an ultra-lightweight and waterproof tile backer board, while Evolith products are fiberglass or polyester non-woven components used in the making of carpet tiles, LVT, and resilient flooring. Tim, you've got integrity. That I, we're, That's what we're talking about. You don't care about money. You didn't need to care about money because it appeared you were never going to have any. And now you've realized, I can. I can overcome this debt, even though it, it, it seems ridiculous. And you, you're working on, on growing this business, charging more. And so you you came to terms with, I can't steal from my family anymore. And you started raising your prices, but you started offering, you figured you had to offer more value. So what are these, what are the values that you started offering to like justify I'm, I'm charging more? Well, my initial, uh, thought was by doing everything by making it touch free care free for the customer for the entire construction process uh and that's not in my ability <laughs> <laughs> i i tried increasing my value by doing that and i wasn't good at it and so there wasn't much value added <laughs> uh, and so i realized the best way to increase my value was to instead of trying to improve my weaknesses to focus on training my strengths mm -hmm. uh like you see any like professional athlete like they're probably not any good at volleyball if they're a golf player yeah. uh, and so it doesn't do them any good practicing volleyball to improve their golf game mm -hmm. they, uh and so that's the journey I've been on the last little over a year. Um, when I, I discovered the tile industry kind of by accident. Okay. I didn't realize there was a tile industry. I thought there was a construction industry. Didn't think it broke down any further than that. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to, uh, the construction industry as a whole for guidance on how to do tile and the information they was giving me was not producing the results that I thought should be there. Like it, uh, and I had a pro a project that was mentioned in the tile letter spotlight mm -hmm. that customer changed from LVT to a slate tile and I didn't know what the subfloor requirements need to be for that slate tile, but I knew that it had to be more than I'd put down for LVP. <laughs> and so I went looking for solutions and uh, ended up coming across uncoupling membranes. Uh, and so I bought some uh, uncoupling membrane and used it. And it was a terrible experience. It did not go well. I did not understand the instructions on how to do it, but then figured out they had training on how to do it. And so I went to the, their training mm -hmm. and they told me about standards and 
TCNA and the NTCA and CTI, and my mind was blown. I instantly stopped doing tile work. Like I had projects going and I stopped and told them we're not proceeding until I figure out how we how we need to do this right. Wow. Uh, like I've I've made I've done stuff wrong. I've made mistakes. But I haven't really done something that I knew was wrong. I <laughs> uh, I was ignorant. <laughs> and uh, now that I knew better, even though I didn't have the skills of how to do better, I knew <laughs> that it should be better. And so I wouldn't do it until I got those skills, until I figured it out. And so I slowly piece by piece got those projects that were going figured out and got them done right uh but then stopped taking uh tile work until i could uh really learn how to do it and i had a thought of what if a craftsperson done a medical education style training for their craft I mean, if you spent seven years learning how to be a contractor before you started being a contractor, mm -hmm. like how much better would you be? And so I spent basically a year going to any class I could, any, any training, any watching every webinar, going to all the trade events. Uh, and uh, there wasn't anything I came across that I didn't go to uh, and I invested heavily in my education to <laughs> figure out what I needed to know and then had to put those to use to learn the skills to go with them uh, to get where I am now. They talk about to take the CTI, you need two years of experience before you're ready. They don't tell you that needs to be two years of doing it to industry standard experience <laughs> like having two years of <laughs> hack work doesn't prepare you for the cti uh and i figured that out when i took it my first time uh, well so after how long did you take it the first time after and um, after i found out uh, about the standards? No, no, no uh, yeah. Like so, you yeah. you were working, right? You, then you stopped installing tile, and you were like trying to learn a bunch. When did you like in this timeline? When was that first CTI test that you're like, oh my god, I didn't even know. Like this is so much harder than I thought. Well, I learned about the CTI being in existence, and four weeks later, I went to take it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, man. Uh, they, I meet, met the requirements, uh, and so I wanted to see where I, where I matched up mm -hmm. to, to see if I need like. It was an entrance exam to me, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I really think it is. I mean, even for anybody who's we are making it look like it's the it's the upper echelon it's the you're certified now you're top tier yeah. I'm uh, I'm to certify love, that the cti is a full certify you as being a basic tile installer uh and so the, it was my starting point uh, after i didn't pass i figured out what areas I was weak in and those were what I focused on studying. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I retested, I think it might've been nine months later, uh, when I retested and passed. Okay. And I, you just kept going. I, I love that you go and get the education and I want to point out that this tile education that you were getting, most likely a lot of it was free. Now, obviously you didn't work that day or you worked a half day or something or you had to, and you had to travel sometimes out of state maybe depending on where it was or at least to a different location but i'm i'm going to assume that a lot of the, the a lot of the education was you know 
product knowledge demos for manufacturers or a, a workshop shop put on by one of the, the big vendors. And you were able to go and get free education minus the, the loss of work and travel expenses. Yeah. So it doesn't call it, it. This isn't like you were getting your college education for tile, but it's way less costly than, than college. You just have to find a way to fit it in your schedule and not, you know, maybe you don't get paid that day. Hey, if you can, if you as an employer can send your employees to these things and you pay them for the day, even better, right? Like that there's a perk that's not offered in a lot of industries is go to this training and, and get paid for it. You don't have to miss work. You don't have to invest in your own dime or anything like that. So I commend you for still being into education and valuing it even after having like a very poor experience with it. And so was it the fact, what attracted you to needing to be able to, to learn? Was it the fact that it was free? Was it the fact you realized that you absolutely needed this in order to be successful with it? What made that happen? At that point, I still didn't, hadn't come to terms with that. I could be successful at it. I just, the drive to do it right mm -hmm. really at any cost was the motivation. I not a fan of traveling. I had, I haven't done much traveling in my life. I had never flown up until that point flying to the CTI in Idaho was my first time on an airplane. Uh, and now I've flown to TSP in Florida and, uh, surfaces in vegas and coverings yes. in vegas uh it it just sparked a drive in me there hadn't been anything that i was willing to travel like that for uh until i got involved in the tile industry was your um, was but, your cti a mud yeah is that why you went diet okay. so you it was it was a yep. double combo of like I want to go learn stuff, right? I can take this test, but then yeah. I can go experience the the mud event as well. And mm -hmm. they, they put on a really good event where you can learn about mud. So, okay. Like it was, it was a double whammy. I, I appreciate that. That's yeah. awesome. Where, how, okay. So we realize, okay, I actually like this industry. I need to get educated to do it more successfully. And, and you're, you're working on that. When did it, start to click that this was really the thing I want to be involved. I can make this work for myself and you, you know, you're, you're starting to charge more, but now, like you said, like I'm going to make more than some of the people that graduated and finished medical school, whereas I dropped out, but I'm making more. How did that all kind of come together? And what has that done for your mindset where you're at? Uh, I'm not quite sure how it come together or even when the realization hit me. Actually, no, I think it was talking with you in Vegas whenever, uh, kind of telling you my backstory, mm -hmm. the self-reflection really helped me come to terms with a lot of it, but. Uh, I remember I was working on my own house. I was, uh, repairing my roof up on the roof, uh, nailing on shingles, mm -hmm. listening to a podcast with Paul Lucia out of Houston. Uh, and just his, uh, the way he was managing his business and the level he was operating at was the service I was, I felt like I was offering mm -hmm. to these lower paying clients that like, I, I felt like I was trying to give them the best service I could. And I was on 40 and $50,000 houses <laughs> in Southern Oklahoma and realized like, I can do the same level of service on higher level homes to higher level clients 
mm-hmm. and have a higher level of pay. Uh, and and so I started doing that with the still undercutting people, not for the sake of undercutting them, but just feeling like I was cheating them if I didn't do it as cheap as I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you start operating at that level and more costly of a problem. Uh, I, I lost you a little bit. What was the last statement? So once you start doing those higher level projects mm-hmm. and you have a problem, it's a lot more costly of a problem than I was having on these lower quality homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that was when I had the realization of where my pricing needed to be. Okay. That it wasn't just, it wasn't only based on the level of service I was offering, but also the level of liability I was incurring. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I think that's a big realization is, uh, you know, I think you have to realize that you're charging money, but you, I look at it as I'm a steward of the client's money and I need to make sure they spend it well. So yes, I, I charge a lot. However, I'm charging you because I want my business to be around in, in years to come. I'm charging you because I want to be able to do this again in case I screw something up. Look, I'm human. I can follow all the standards, specifications, guidelines, whatever you want, all I want. At some point, I'm human. I'm going to make an error, and I need to be able to pay for that. And I don't want my client to have to wait. I don't want to have to go down the road of, you know, I'm I'm broke and I can't do it, and now i got to take a deposit and pay for it. I just want to be able to go to my bank account and throw some money at my problems because I've learned that life is easy when you have money to throw at problems. And that comes from like you, like I didn't have the amount of debt you had, but like I've been broke and lived paycheck to paycheck and not known how I was going to pay my bills. In fact, there was one time like my, I had to put my dog down. It was not a good day. But that money was for my mortgage. So like you can put your dog down or you can you can pay your mortgage. And I was like, well, I can't let my dog suffer. So this is what I got to do with my money. And I was able to go and scramble and like make some money. But you make things happen to to do it. And I almost think being in that scrappy stage is is almost better because you like you have to hustle and get creative and whatnot. So it's not a bad place to be. I think it's great to remember where you came from, but at the same time, like you start advancing and and moving up. And like you said, there's a lot more liability when you walk in someone's house that has a half a million, million dollar, $10 million house, whatever it's going to be, man, you, you scratch the, the faux paint job that some guy was in there spending weeks doing with a sponge. Like you can't just go down to the, the big box store and pick up a quart of paint and, touch that up like you got to hire the guy to come out for thousands of dollars to touch up that one spot so how do you do that you charge enough to make sure that you can handle a mistake so uh, that's a big realization that this isn't just about me being able to feed my family or me being able to provide this service there's got to be extra for other expenses that i'm incurring and how has that evolved, right? Like it's taken shape, but now it's not just, I need to charge more because I'm worth it. I need to charge more because I'm, you know, I have liability. Where else has this evolved for you? Because this is your realization that like, oh, money doesn't matter. I'm going to do what makes me happy. But now it's, I'm, can be happy, but I can get paid to be happy, which I think is a completely another level of, of like realization, right? It's kind of come full circle. Well, even being okay with being broke, I'm not okay with not fulfilling my debt obligation. Mm. Like that's part of integrity. I promise to repay that money. Uh, and even though I haven't had the financial means to do it, 
mm-hmm. and felt like I couldn't, uh, it's still something that aches on me. Uh, and so I, I started my business to be a contractor so that I wouldn't have a W-2 for them to be able to take from me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've been trying to figure out how to repay and I have been mm-hmm. paying down on my debt and working things out as best as I can, but not letting my family suffer because of my past mistakes has been my, my biggest drive to increase my pay, even though I could be happy without the pay. Mm-hmm. Like I've, it's not my money I'm trying to earn right now. <laughs> no, I, I get it. it. Well, and I know like, look, like I know you just bought a dump trailer, right? You're investing in equipment. You're not holding mm-hmm. back on growing your business. And so, well, yes, you want to honor a debt obligation, you are spending money on things to make you more money. You're not afraid of of investing in yourself, investing in your business to push it further forward so you can continue doing what you're doing, which I once again, it's it's awesome to see somebody. I know like I was in the situation of I had the money to pay a tax bill one year, except then I didn't work in January, February and, and March and I spent all the money that would have paid my my tax bill. So then I ended up owing the IRS a bunch of money and I had to go to my dad and ask to borrow that money. And he watched me build the flooring business after I left the the television world. And he watched me buy my seven by 14 trailer. He watched me buy a really expensive vacuum to do dustless tile removal. And it wasn't that I wasn't giving him money along the way, but I could have paid him back that $10,000 way quicker had I not bought a trailer and an expensive vacuum and this tool and that tool, but never once did he ask for the money. Never did he bother me. I think he saw what I was doing and what I was able to do and and learning and growing. And so that's, that's a huge step. And now granted the, the student loan companies aren't going to buy that as an excuse. Like they keep calling and harass. I, I, Oh, I know how much they call and harass you and tell you, you need to pay them. Um, but you will be able to better pay them back and faster with these investments you're making because it saves you time, money. You can charge more for services because you can do them more quickly, efficiently than other people. Like it's, it's amazing what happens when you change that mindset and you're able to see what a little loss now will do for you down the road. And where, so where is Tim going, right? You, you've moved, you're reestablishing yourself and you've, you've made a lot of big commitments to, to the industry. So where, where's Tim going now? Cause he doesn't care about his past. It's not a fact. It, and I, maybe that's the thing, right? Like you, you dropped it, right? You lost that baggage. Mm-hmm. So where where are you going? What are you doing, man? Uh, you know, I, my wife keeps asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't have an answer. I'm not trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to run my race the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. But I'm not racing to get to a destination. Uh, I didn't even consider myself that involved in the tile industry over the last year. Like I was still checking it out (laughs) and the thing, but, and I keep hearing back from people on my level of involvement. And I just felt like that was a pretty normal level, but uh, I'm just doing what I feel able and how I can contribute when I have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, I don't know where that's going to take me, but I'm going to do the best I can along the way. Can you get other contractors to keep it so simple? 
<laughs> I no, I, I look, it, I do you want to grow your business? Does it need to like does it need to grow? Do you want employees? I do want employees. Okay. I don't want to have to manage them, but okay. uh, that's not that's not one of my strong suits. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's a book I want to recommend. It's called uh, I call it the Who book, but it's Who the A method for hiring by Geoff Smart. It details the a hiring process for hiring the right person for the job, not mm-hmm. just focusing on the best candidate you've come across. Uh, and it really helped me to realize my place, where I fit in, into the company I want to build. And so I'm not a great manager. That's why I didn't work out at Chick-fil-A. But I do want a bigger company. I would love to be working thin panel right now. But you can't do that solo. I've structured everything else in my projects to where I can do it solo. Mm-hmm. There's not, there's things I could, I say that there's not really anything I can do faster with other people because I don't know how to operate that way. <laughs> I've <laughs> built systems and processes to be solo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so whenever I have somebody trying to help me, like it takes so much for me to modify the process to, to occupy two people's time that it becomes counterproductive. But I do want to hire a better manager than me. I want to hire somebody to manage my company in a few years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, I've, been in that process for a couple months of I did of identifying that person like not the specific person their name but what that person looks like okay so that I can start the search for that person uh, well like you said you don't have like a you said I'm running my race the best I can and I don't have like a destination but you do like it's there it's just not fully articulated yet right like you're starting to put those pieces in place of where you want to go and how you want to get there and what that looks like and i don't think you have to know and Mm -hmm. that's some of the beauty is i think there's a lot of guys and gals that are just showing up collecting work orders and they get a paycheck at the end of the week and they're they're happy But in order to do this business owner thing, right, and start owning a business instead of owning a job, now we're we're building goals, we're we're setting a focus, we're figuring out how we're going to get to that next destination and what that looks like and and what it takes. Because look, owning a business, you you go from being the guy that makes the widgets or doing the actual work and, and just being an installer. And the minute you say, well, I'm going to own my own installation business. You, you now put on 50 other hats to wear, to make that business successful. And we shouldn't be wearing 50 of those hats probably because we were good at, installing not everybody's good at managing a business not everybody's good at training employees or marketing or advertising or whatever it is so you you have like you said you have to find the right fit for that seat it's uh jim collins in in good to great he talks about right person in the right seat on the bus right if if all your employees have to get on the bus you got to put the right person in the right seat if you put the lady that is really great at marketing in the driver's seat of that bus. She can't drive the bus. You're going to crash. That ain't going to work. So starting to, to realize that there's the, the little tweaks that need to be made is even a, a big step in growing that bigger plan. It's it's fine to dream and say, oh, I'm going to do 10 million a year. Well, how do you get to 10 million a year? Like, let's break that down and, and reverse engineer it. And that's what you're slowly doing. 
and I think that's what you've been doing for a while. Is it for, okay? I need to learn how to do tile. How do I do that? You found those things. How do I become qualified to do tile? Well, you found that and, and we can have that debate. I'm with Timothy, go become certified. That's how you know you can do tile, right? Like the, the industry is telling you that you know how to do tile, but that everybody's telling for, the customer they can do tile. Correct. They need somebody else to tell them you can do tile. I, I agree. Other people won't agree. We're not going to have that debate right now. We're not going to go down that road, but I, I, I'm with you, right? You went and you had the industry tell you, you can do tile. Okay. So now you're out doing tile. Now, how do I get more people to do tile with me so that I can get into other aspects of it? Like you said, thin panel, which is going to require what four minimum three, but probably four or five people to have successful installations is my understanding. Mm -hmm. So there's the next step. How do we get there? And I don't doubt that you'll engineer the way to get there. And then you'll put the people in place that are, will make that successful. So along with that, what, what else, what other little things are, are we doing? Because money didn't matter. We could throw it all away. And, and now you've built this thing that I don't think you want to throw away anymore. Now I've, uh, I really want to be happy doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I hear all these people that have been in the industry a long time that are miserable in their job, but they're doing it because they liked it at some point, but the way they're doing it, they don't like it anymore. Uh, and I don't want to be that way. I don't want my knees giving out, mm -hmm. uh, in a decade and I've got to go beg for a rep job. I, I love what I'm doing and I want to do it as long as I can. And so I'm trying to find the best way for me to do it without uh, killing myself to where I can do it as long as I can. Uh, and if that means I've got to go buy another tool, then that tool's required for the job. It's not, it's not a plus. It's not, oh, it'll be easier when I get that. If that's the tool I need to be able to maintain doing this for an entire career, then mm -hmm. that tool is required. Uh, well, and it's, I mean, that's just a good mindset. It's I'm investing in this. So it, it's an investment in myself so I can continue doing this. And it, I mean, if you want to hear a great interview on realizing that you're not happy and maybe it's time to switch careers or it, it just being passionate about what you're doing, you can go back. And I, I did an awesome interview with, with Danny Sherman on, on that. And so it's, I don't know, three months, four months back, somewhere around there. Keep scrolling. Look for Danny's name. Um, but he made a tough decision to shut down his installation business that he had grown from from nothing, right? Like he was the guy and then he went on to having lots of crews and keeping them busy and an office manager and all this stuff. And he essentially handed the work to the the office manager and she started her own business and she's keeping those crews busy now. But he didn't that wasn't the thing anymore and i i think you're right there's a lot of people that are are grumpy and they in in construction in general there's a bunch of people that bitch and moan about i'm stuck here i can't get out i can't do it and i don't believe that you don't want to put in the effort to change because i've put in a ton of effort and i've built something amazing and I, I've talked about on the show, I don't know what I'm doing. I, my install business is, is, is great, but it, it's clear that I love this aspect of it more. And I don't know how much longer the installation business will be around. I haven't made that decision. And it's not that I don't like it. It's not that I don't and enjoy it but I'm not as happy doing it as I am having interviews and talking business and, and doing those things. So 
you can shift, you can move around, but it, I'm still within the, I'd still be within the industry. And I, I love this industry. It gave me a lot of opportunities that I never had in life. It embraced me when I was, when I was nothing and had questions and didn't know what was going on. I think you probably feel the same way, Timothy, like you, you stepped in and there was people that were like, come, like, I will educate you and, and show you a better way. And that's taken yeah. you really it's taking you really far and now you just want to give back. And this is how I, I give back is, is doing this show. And it's, there's nothing wrong with change. You can still do something that makes you happy, but you don't have to suffer. And I think that's the message is you were, and correct me if I'm wrong or, you know, give me an explanation afterwards, but, it, you were still going to school 10 years ago. So what, like seven, eight years ago, when, when you were looking at this mountain of debt piling up, you were probably miserable, stressed out and had no clue. And you found something that gives you joy and, and freedom. And you feel that you can actually overcome this mountain that's at your, you know, at your feet and you're climbing it and you're going to overcome it and, and move forward. And that's an amazing thing. And so for when people are like, I hate install, what do you want to do, dude? Or, or, or lady or gal, like, what do you want to do? Why can't you create that? Go create what you want. I don't know. I, that's, that's me. And I, I think that, our our brain is is a lot stronger than people will give themselves credit for because there's no way that you did all of this just on on a whim and some encouragement from your wife like you you have some mental fortitude to have done all of this I think it's mostly just her. She's pretty persuasive. <laughs> and I love that you give her credit, but she didn't. I mean, look, she, yeah, she talks you up and she encourages you, but you had to go do it. You had to suffer through it every day. You had to want to go and, and pay attention, right? Don't sell yourself short. You're the one, at, like, she encouraged you, but you did the actual work. You went to the house, you installed the tile, you went to the seminar, you got the education. She didn't do, she's not getting the education and then telling you how to do the work. Don't, don't sell yourself short here. Don't do that. So what's, what, what's next? We're, we're going to, we're going to find somebody to hire. Where, where's, yeah. where's yeah. Timothy going to go? What What's built on integrity going to do? It could be like a, what's, what's like, Five years where it's built on integrity. I would like to be driving the bus and able to install when I want to, mm -hmm. to hit the point of not have to be on my knees, but still in a position that I can because I'm happy doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, I want to keep it enjoyable uh, and keep the ability to enjoy it, but said I don't have a, a picture of where I'm going, but I know you're, you're always either, either moving forward or backwards. You can't stay where you're at. If I just stay doing exactly what I'm doing and it'll be stagnant. It'll mm -hmm. degrade over time. And so I'm looking for the next step forward. I don't know what that step is, where to grow or what to be involved with, but I don't want to lose what I've got. Uh, like you said. And so I, I see the best way to do that is to find the manager that my company needs. I feel I've had plenty of bad bosses 
I've had plenty of bad jobs. Um, and I've been in plenty of bad companies. I feel like I'm cheating the world by being selfish and being the only one enjoying where I'm at. Uh, I w would like to be able to provide that for other people. Uh, and so it's not really in my ability to, to grow and manage all those people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I do hope to find that person that can, uh, so that I can open that up. Um, I do like the idea of having an actual federally recognized apprenticeship program. Um, I don't consider myself a good teacher, but I'm always happy to share what I know. Uh, mm -hmm. And even though I don't have the techniques to be a good teacher, I'm pretty willing to, to teach. Uh, and so I think that that could be a good fit for me. You, you know, there's another skill. There, there's a lady in your state that knows all about that. And she was actually tuned in earlier to the live. She's an inspiration. <laughs> if you're interested in, uh, finding out about federally funded employees, Aaron Albrecht at, at Jane Artile is the lady to talk about. Go go to their website, Jane Artile. Um, you, you can look up Jane Artile in San Antonio, Texas. Email her. She would probably be happy to talk with you about it. Maybe I'm throwing her under the bus. I doubt it. She's, <laughs> she's very passionate about making this happen because what contractor doesn't want employees paid for? Um, within the she's she's a member of the mastermind group that one of them that i host or sorry one of them that i facilitate and within her talking about it there is another member who is off in salt lake city and he's getting funding from his local unemployment department now from the federal government to be able to find employees and and pay them so it's available nationwide you just have to find the way to do it and there's people that are willing to help you do it. It's, it's amazing. So I, I, there's people to help. I, I think it's great, right? You don't want to always be the guy to train, but you got to train that first one or two. And you're, you're hopefully off to the races from there. Like I'm excited to see where you go because I know how much passion you have and you wouldn't be an ambassador for the NTCA and telling people that they should be a member and what the benefits are. And you wouldn't be, participating in the texas tile posse group on facebook if you weren't excited about you know building a community in your area to where you can help people grow and be able to do things so i'm super excited to see where your your journey takes you and, and watch it and, and keep chatting with you if anybody has questions about your journey how it's worked out or, or anything like that how can people reach out to you tim well first they'll have to support you on patreon before i'll even talk to them oh but... i love it thank you <laughs> so um i'm back on facebook now i created facebook just to get involved with the tile groups i'd heard about <laughs> and so uh you can find me on facebook uh timothy studeman um my email is timothy.studeman at gmail.com pretty simple you can figure out how to spell it off of facebook uh, uh but yeah uh I'll, you can also reach me up on my phone i'm not i don't answer it when i'm working i don't answer it when i'm with my family and so you got to leave a message if you want me to call you back <laughs> but i'm glad for anybody to call me with any questions Area codes four three zero five two nine zero two nine nine. I think a man with boundaries will be very successful. So good for you. Because I can tell you that I've texted him, and it's it's hours and hours before he replies. And well, that's annoying to me because I can't not respond to people when they give me messages. I I commend you for it because my wife gets real mad when like my nose is in the phone constantly. So yeah everyone's got things they got to work on right um 
I, like I said, I thank you for coming on. I, I, I'm excited to see where you're going, and I, I will watch intently. I, I think it's it's great for the industry. I'm, I'm excited about a lot of the, the people coming in, getting excited, and and I think that'll help attract a, a new generation. And I'm excited to see what that turns into. What are the the newcomers going to do to this generation the next 5 10 20 years where do, where does this all go and it's going to be awesome to watch so that's going to do it for us this week folks thank you for for tuning in check out flooracademypod.com i've got some awesome click on the files tab there's some great stuff over there how do you you know building out your business budget so you know what to charge tracking your equipment so your insurance company hates you if you ever have to file a claim because you'll have everything in one place and they won't know what hit them there's a job cost analyzer over there so you can look at like what your profits are actually doing uh go to the store pick up a shirt shirts are cool everyone wants some floor academy gear you'll look really you'll, you'll be the coolest at all of the conventions and, and get togethers and trainings if you have a floor academy shirt don't let anybody tell you differently and as Timothy mentioned, if you want to help support the show, you can do so over at patreon.com slash floor academy. Even five bucks a month goes a long way in helping keep the lights on back in Mesa. Uh, currently, my mother-in-law is paying for the for the electricity bill. But back home, like I got bills to pay. So if, if you want to help me out, I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you to the sponsors. Appreciate International Services event and John's Manville. And Timothy, once again, thank you for your time and coming on the show. We'll catch you all next week.